Hi YouTube, it's Courtney. I'm checking in for my week seven and a half update because I just can't seem to get updates in on Wednesday or Friday. So here we are. Um, this video is going to be really long. It's going to encompass a lot of things about how I survived the conference, um, what I did in Disney, um, the rapid weight loss that I seem to all of a sudden be having, which wasn't generally the case for a few weeks, so, um, and what I think is going on with that, which is, you know, my own non-medical opinion. So, let's get started. Uh, my highest weight is, uh, was 345. Um, that was before I started my process. I only really lost like four or five pounds on my, um, six-month pre-op, um, weight loss, um, with my surgeon. If you want, you can go back and check that if you're a new subscriber. Um, my last official weigh-in was on 2-11. Um, that was before I left for the conference, the Wednesday before that. Um, and that weigh-in was 306.8. And then on 225, when I returned from the conference, I actually ended up hitting Wonderland or whatever you want to call it. I think that's kind of a farce. But anyway, it felt good to be a Nazi of three anymore. That was great. Um, and I was 299.1. Um, so that was a total official loss for the conference, so those, that two weeks of weigh-in almost, of 7.7 .7 pounds. Um, now, I weighed myself again today because I am a daily weigher, and I just would like to state for the record that my weight loss has been super rapid lately because I'm already down another three pounds, so I'm sitting at 296.1. Um, that, I think, has a lot to do with the fact that for a really long time, I sat at like 302 to 305, and I think now that my body's past that um, set point, I am now starting to see that rapid initial weight loss that high BMI here see, I'm guessing. I, I don't know, to be honest. It just feels good. Like, the scale is moving really fast, like a pound a day right now. So, I don't know that this will actually continue, but... I'll take it while I can. So I didn't actually write down my total weight loss so far, and I'm going to match that as today is what my total weight loss is, because I just don't, I'm lazy and I don't want to do the math. So I'm at 48.9 pounds according to my tracker. Um, that's crazy, guys. That's like super crazy. I'm only seven weeks out. I was supposed to have a post-op appointment with my surgeon on Tuesday. Um, my month post-op appointment that kept getting pushed back so it ended up being like a six-week post-op. Uh, now it's going to be um, almost an eight-week post-op because we just can't get on the same schedule and I had some things happen at work when I got back that I had to take care of so I couldn't leave to go to the appointment. Um, nothing's really going to change in that regard. He's probably just going to, you know, check out everything, see that I'm doing okay and then, um, yeah, hopefully give me another high five because I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Um, I don't even know what that is in terms of 48.9 divided by, so that's 6.9 pounds a week average. <laughs> okay, so why are we here? Um, well, I had a crazy business trip. Um, I made a short video where I was completely and utterly exhausted. Um, and at the conference, just to let you guys know that I was alive and okay. Um, but uh, the conference is essentially around 500 attendees. We have really big speakers like um, TED Talk people and governors and former governors. And there's a lot that happens and it's very high stress. And what I do is I go in and I do all the photography. I help with registration. And this year we were focusing really heavily on a whole bunch of administrative stuff for the website. So I was working 12 or 13 hour days and flying down to Florida. You hit the ground running. You run until you're done. And then on Friday, Josh and I actually rented a car and we left and we drove up to Orlando. It's about a three hour drive. Um, and we ended up staying in Disney. So I haven't really had a day off like where I've just been relaxing in a while and it 
caught up with me this week. I was exhausted all week. So during the conference, we, we stay at really high-end resorts, five-star resorts. And that means that we have concierge that is available to us 24-7. Let me tell you, I don't think that I could have gotten through the conference without these people because they just go and do things for you. Like, I need coffee, and then the coffee comes. Or I need food, and the food comes. Um, room service. Like, I don't think Josh and I opened a door ourselves the entire time we were there. And the other weird thing was that I didn't throw out trash the entire time I was there because there's always just people or trays to put trash on and the trash disappears. So it's a very different life than what we're used to living. Um, but it was really helpful as a surgery patient because I really didn't have to think about food. It just kind of... If I was hungry, I asked for something and it came. And they were also, because they were such a high-end resort, extremely accommodating to me. So the nice thing was that I'd order a plate of food and Josh would finish it off. Like, I'd order the plate of food with the french fries or whatever and Josh would eat the rest of the meat and then the french fries. So for the most part, what I did was in the morning I had room service and they'd bring me eggs and bacon and sausage and some fruit. And um, I'd eat what I could and then Josh would finish it off. Um, so I was always getting my breakfast protein in, except for the last day, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, every single day for lunch, I had grilled chicken tenders, kind of, but they were really just breast cut in tender shapes. They were perfectly cooked with like an orange blossom honey mustard, which I'm, I'm ruined for honey mustard for the rest of my life now. Um, but so I'd have that and so I'd get in all the protein that I needed to get. And then for dinner, it varied. Um, they had restaurants all over the resort, and I could have gone back and gotten room service, but there was only a few items on room service, um, including the chicken tenders that I could really have eaten. So, without like 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 ser seriously modifying through the issue, and um, so we went to a few different. Um, we went to the Italian restaurant two nights, and. I had one night, it was like a wedge of iceberg lettuce with some fontina cheese and salami and provolone with a white truffle balsamic or something equally as pretentious. Um, and, uh, it was really good and I was able to eat it and they were actually perfect weight loss surgery portions because fancy plates. Um, and then the next night I had Brussels sprouts which didn't go well, unfortunately, they tasted amazing. I love them, but my sleeve did not like digesting them. So it was a little bit painful for the rest of the night. Um, I did backtracking before we left for the conference. Um, we stayed at a hotel in Queens and the food choices aren't that great there. So we ordered from Seamless and I just got an omelet and bacon. Well, I think there was a really high fat or grease content in something that I ate because I ended up dumping and I'm 99% sure what it was was dumping because I got shakes and then I had to run to the bathroom and it was this horrible, horrible experience and it was just, I was ruined for the rest of the night. Thankfully, it didn't, it, it's, it passed as quickly as it came. So like an hour or two later, I was feeling a little bit better, but it like it wrecked me for those two hours. But anyway, back to the conference. So, um... Everything went really well with the food. Um, the second night I had the Brussels sprouts and I had a caprese, so it was just uh, mozzarella and tomato and some balsamic vinegar, and that was really good. And then the last night we were there, I had tuna fish um, and avocado and some fruit, and it was like the best tuna fish ever, and it was so pretty. I've never had such pretty tuna fish in my life. Food was actually pretty good there. Um, on Friday, when we got up, I didn't have time because I had to pack and get things squared away. So I didn't eat breakfast, which was a fatal error on my part. Thankfully, we had packed like three or four Premier Proteins just in case because we didn't know what the situation was going to be at the breakers. And so... At around like 10 or 11, I got really dizzy and really faint, and I realized that I was probably low on protein. And so Josh ran up to our suitcases, which were stored in the office, and he got me my protein, and he put it in a coffee cup with ice 
and then a lid so that nobody would know that I was drinking a random Premier Protein Shake. I don't know why I have an aversion to, like, random ass people seeing me drinking a protein shake. I guess I just don't want the questions and what that would then spin into. I don't know. So, overall, the conference went really well. Um, I drink coffee every day, but... I don't I would like to challenge you to working these days and dealing with these people and not drinking coffee. So um yeah, speaking of coffee. So we left and we stopped and I ended up eating grilled chicken on a salad um for lunch and we got me a coffee but I had a skinny okay, I have a grape with a barista in West Palm Beach. And if I ever knew who it was, I'd, I'd actually write her a mean letter because she ruined my coffee for me. And I needed coffee at that moment. So Josh went, when he went to go get the rental car on his way back, he stopped to get me a cup of Starbucks. And I usually get a skinny caramel latte with sugar-free syrup. Okay. Well, that's what he ordered. He read it directly off of the thing and they gave it to him. And he said that it smelled weird because he's been around me with coffee before and he said that it just didn't smell right, but he didn't think anything of it. And it got to me, and I took a sip of it, and it tasted like ass. And I opened it, and it was covered in cinnamon on the top. So there is a rogue barista in West Palm Beach, just so you're aware, that puts cinnamon on your caramel lattes. And don't ever do it. But we ended up driving to Orlando. The drive was fine. Um, we got there, and we checked in, and then we went for dinner at the Rainforest Cafe. And I had grilled chicken there, so pretty much sick of grilled chicken. But I, my the, the moral of my story here, which I'm going to tell you, I ate mostly grilled chicken and salad at Disney too, but then there were some other things that happened, which we'll explain in a minute. And I haven't found a place where I can't find something on the menu. You have to look hard and you have to be okay with asking for them to hold something. But for the most part, with the quantity of food that we eat, even the fat contents, even if they're slightly higher, there is something that is reasonable for you to eat on a menu. So whoever's saying that it's impossible to eat out after being a weight loss surgery patient or it's impossible to do, like, you know, enjoy company or go out and go to different restaurants, they're lying to you. Or at least they don't understand their dietary needs. Okay? Maybe I'm lucky because my dad's a chef and I understand protein and fat and how things are cooked. But as a weight loss surgery patient, I feel like we have a responsibility to ourselves to be aware of the different cooking techniques when you're going out to restaurants. Understanding what a saute is, understanding what grilling means, understanding what broiling means, all these things, understanding what... You know, the fancy terms of, like, what is it now, juice? Like, just know that before you go out, and then it'll be fine. And then, at the very least, just order a freaking chicken sandwich and take the bread off. End of story. So now I'm off my soapbox. But Disney was really fun. Uh, we ended up walking, I think, fifteen to 16,000 steps a day. We went to downtown Disney the first night when we were there on Friday. And then on Saturday, we went to Animal Kingdom. And that was really nice. I had never actually been to Animal Kingdom or Epcot which is what we did on Sunday. And it was just, it was really cool. I love animals and I love things of that nature. And when I was little, I used to go to Six Flags in Jersey and we would go to the safari and I love the giraffes. They're my favorite thing in the world. But I think one of my favorite things, we saw a baby gorilla, like a baby gorilla, tiny baby gorilla. It was awesome. So that was really fun. Um, and um, something, I didn't get tired. I mean, I was tired from the conference, but last year when I left the conference, I was wrecked for days. I couldn't walk. Everything hurt. I was just exhausted. I was mentally exhausted. And that probably has to do with my first conference. And that the, we stayed at the Phoenician in Phoenix. And it was huge and sprawling. And there was a, that we probably walked equally as much. The Breakers is a lot more condensed, so it was... It wasn't as stressful to me, plus beach. I can't really be stressed at the beach. It's not possible for me. Um, so, on, I did really well at Animal Kingdom. I didn't cheat. I didn't do anything bad. I didn't have anything that I shouldn't have had. Um, 
I did really well. I was saving myself for Epcot. I knew that that was going to be a trying experience, and I was right. But I would like to preface this, and this isn't me excusing my behavior, because my behavior wasn't that bad, and I came home and had lost four pounds. And my walking made up for it. But I didn't have the surgery to not enjoy experiences. And I grew up surrounded by fine cuisine and alcohol. And I respect it and I want to taste it and I want to enjoy it. Now, I would like to preface this with everything that I'm about to mention that went into my body was literally a bite or a sip. It was nothing more. Okay? For the record. So we got to Epcot and I did really well in the morning because there wasn't really much doing. We went around the future area and then we went over to the world. And that's where things get crazy for you know, mid to upper 20s where you want to drink around the world. So Josh started drinking and eating desserts around the countries. And what I did was I would take a sip of his beer and I didn't die. I know, carbonation, wow. I did burp a lot, but I didn't die. It was just a sip or two. And some of the beers were good and it was worth it. Uh, and it was like high quality beer. It's not like I was drinking like, like a little bit lighter or anything. And then he would have a dessert in the next country. So he had crepes, chocolate covered crepes, and then he had tiramisu. And then he had a sweet, like a, some kind of cake, um, sweet bread or not sweet bread because that's brains, but um, like it was school bread it's called in Norway. So every time we went into a country, I ate a bite and it was worth it and I enjoyed it and I didn't die and I have no regrets at all. Like, none. Um, I actually ended up realizing that I enjoy hoppier beer now more than I did previously, but it could be that this was a really balanced beer. If you enjoy beer, like Andrew, BSU Spike, or Melissa, um, Mamma Mia, if you enjoy beer, there was a beer that we had in the Americas called Hopageddon, and it was the best balance of hops that I've ever probably experienced ever in a beer. And I've had my fair share of hoppy beer because I'm surrounded by people that love IPAs. And it was just so good. So we did that. And then on our way back through, we stopped back in Japan. And we ended up having dinner on um, in Tokyo restaurant next to the window overlooking the lagoon. And we watched the fireworks while we ate sushi. Or I ate sushi. I had already tested sushi, like some crab, previously, but I was really dying for some nigiri. I didn't eat the rice with the nigiri. I just had the fish, and my sleeve loved it. It went down. I didn't have any blockage. It chewed great. It didn't sit funny in me. It was nice and light. So I had no problem with the sushi. Nobody told me that I couldn't have sushi. Nobody said, hey, don't do this. So I did it. Um... I also didn't ask. I mean, don't ask if you don't want to know the answer, I guess. Um, and then I did have, it was a sushi sampler. And then there were two pieces of rolls. Like there was a spicy roll and then a California roll. But there were only two pieces of it. So I ate the California roll because I knew I could do the crab and I knew I could do it. And I picked off some of the rice, but I kept some of the rice on. My sleeve really likes rice. It's not good. Um, I'll be avoiding that. That was just like a really big treat for me. And, um, cause I'm not cleared for breads or carbs or rice or anything like that. So it was definitely a cheat. Uh, and then I had the spicy roll, which wasn't really that good. I mean, I, I work in New York city and I lived in New York city. So sh sushi for me is like, I've had some really good sushi and the spicy roll just wasn't that great. Um, so I like took off most of the rice on that and had no problem with the seaweed or anything. Um, and then I ate a little bit. Josh had some grilled vegetables that I ate. And I didn't feel overstuffed because it was three pieces of jiri. It was tuna, salmon, and yellowtail. And they all went down perfect. And then there was, like, I, I ate only one of each roll. So that, that was pretty much it. And everything was digested great. Um, how I survived eating while away. Well, I didn't just eat grilled chicken. I had perky jerky with me all the time. 
And that was really good at the airport because on the way down, our flight was delayed a few hours and finding quality food in an airport is something that I just don't think is an adventure that I want to go on. So that morning I had coffee and then I was getting hungry so I had a bite of Josh's banana and then um, I had perky jerky. And that worked out pretty well. And then I'd have it on the plane, like when they started bringing out all the carby snacks instead, because we were on JetBlue. So JetBlue actually has jerky and protein packs now. It's really cool. They actually have really nice snacks and they're cheap. Um, but it's beef jerky. I'm not a big fan of beef jerky. I just like my perky jerky. That's what I prefer. Sweet and spicy. Um, but yeah, like when they started coming out with that, I would just ask for water and I'd drink some of the water and then I'd have the perky jerky. And that was nice. Um, did that on the way back up too. Uh, so that, that went really well. Overall, I'd say that it was a successful trip. Um, considering how much weight I lost, I felt really good. I felt energized. I never felt really like that pure exhaustion that comes from carrying around your weight. It wasn't that I feel like I'm fitter now, even though I'm still as heavy as I have been for a long time, I feel a lot more fit because I've been working out so much. Um, and I think that that helped me with my stamina. NSVs. Again, walking. So much. I don't know how to express how hard it was for me to walk for a really long time because of my knee. Um, but my leg is a lot stronger now. And just being able to walk around Disney like that and not be any pain other than my feet hurting. Which had more to do with the flats that I wore at the conference than anything. Um... That was really nice. It was relieving. I was really able to enjoy Disney this time. Like, I was just really able to take it all in. And then the other big NSV, which has to be mentioned, is that I did not need a seatbelt extender. But to be fair, last time I flew JetBlue, I was probably around 310 and I didn't need a seatbelt extender then either. But I probably would have at 345 because it, like, barely snapped in. So, um, I think that's about it. Right now, uh, everything's going really well. We're back to the gym. I'm doing okay. I'll hit, I'll hit 19 or 20 workouts this weekend. I'm behind on my 200 workouts this year. It's not going to happen since it's already February. That would be a miracle. Maybe. We'll see. The summer might be a little bit easier because we can get out more. It's just so cold in New York right now. Oh my god, it's never going to end. So, um, here's a nice long update for everybody that likes listening to me blather on. Um, also, I didn't mention this because I'm an asshole, but I also met Stephanie, Fat Doesn't Define Me, at, um, at Epcot. We met her and her fiancé, and it was awesome, and I can't believe I just, I was so focused on the food and the fact that I was a bad girl. But Stephanie was awesome. She is exactly who you think she is. Um, she's sweet. Um, she's beautiful, she's a good person, and we only got to spend a little time together because she was leaving and we were just, it was like we were ships passing in the night that happened to see each other. So, well not happened, we talked and we texted and we got to meet each other, but, um, it was really nice getting to meet some somebody and, um, I wish I could have had met Melissa Collins, but that wasn't in the cards for us, um, this time, but. I'm convinced that I will meet her and we will run away together. That's true. So, anyway, um, I hope everybody's having a good time. Sorry I'm not caught up on videos yet. Um, I'm going to try to this weekend. This weekend I'm going to be just chill and laid back. So, um, I think last weekend was a bit crazy. So, I'm just going to be, you know, lazy. Because I'm allowed to pee after 22 miles of walking. So... Um, I will be in touch hopefully um, soon and I'll let you guys know how my Monday appointment goes with my surgeon. So have a good weekend.